Hello, welcome back. Last time we talked about summing arithmetic series. This time we're going to talk about summing geometric series. Let's start off with a finite geometric series. That looks like am plus am plus 1 plus dot 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 plus an, where the series has a common ratio, this time we'll call x instead of r. That is, we can write a sub k as equal to a times x to the k for some constant a. And so we are looking for the sum a x to the m plus a x to the m plus 1 all the way to a x to the n. If we write that as s and then we multiply by x, then what we get is the same series shifted one term over. So now if we take s and we take away the x s, all these plus signs become minus signs. And so when we add these together, all the terms in the middle add to 0. And what we're left with is 1 minus x times s is equal to ax to the m minus a times x to the n plus 1. This is the mth term, and this is the n plus first term. And so if we solve for s, and so we'll see that s is equal to a sub m minus a sub n plus 1 divided by 1 minus x. Now a sub n plus 1 is the term after a sub n in that sequence. So the way I like to think about this sum is as the first term minus the next term divided by 1 minus the common ratio. So let's look at some examples. If we have the sum 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus dot 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 up to 1024, the first term is 1, the common ratio is 2, we multiply by 2 each time. The next term, if we multiplied by 2 again, would give us 2048. So if we apply our formula, we get 1 minus 2048 divided by 1 minus 2, which is equal to negative 2047 over negative 1, which is 2047. Here's another example, 64 plus 160 plus 400 plus dot 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 6250. We can see that this is a geometric series where to get from 64 to 160, we multiply by 5 halves. From 60 to 400, we multiply by 5 halves, etc. Now the first term is 64. The common ratio is 5 halves. And the next term is what happens when we multiply 6250 times 5 halves, which gives us 15,625. So the sum evaluates to 64 minus 15,625 divided by 1 minus 5 halves, and that is negative 15,561 divided by negative 3 halves, which is 10,374. So now that's a finite geometric series. What about an infinite geometric series? Remember, when you have an infinite arithmetic series, it does not have a sum. What about a geometric series? An infinite geometric series can always be written a plus a times x plus a times x squared plus dot 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 with that common ratio x. We can use the same method we used before to find s and take away the excess to get 1 minus x times s is equal to a because all of the other terms cancel out. So this sum is equal to a, that first term, divided by 1 minus the common ratio. You do need to be careful. This equation only works if x is strictly between negative 1 and 1. What happens if x is equal to negative 1? That would be 6 minus 6 plus 6 minus 6 plus 6 minus 6. And what about x equals 2? 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus dot dot dot. Neither of these sums converge. So those sums by themselves, they do not equal anything. Let's do some examples. Let's calculate 1 minus a third plus a ninth minus 1 27th plus 1 over 81 continuing on forever. The first term is 1. The common ratio is negative 1 third because every time we multiply by negative 1 third. Is that value between negative 1 and 1? Yes. So there will be an answer. When we apply the formula, we get 1 over 1 minus negative 1 third or 1 over 1 plus a third, which is equal to 3 quarters. And another example, let's calculate 8 plus 2, plus a half, plus an eighth, plus 1 32nd. Here we see we're multiplying by a quarter each time. The first term is 8. The common ratio is that quarter. One quarter does lie strictly between negative 1 and 1. And applying the formula gives us 8 over 1 minus a quarter, which simplifies to 8 over 3 quarters, which is 
32 thirds. That's about 10.666. Okay, let's leave that here for now. See you shortly.